In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Please have a seat. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. We hear that in Peter's first letter this morning. Stephen Colbert, on the debut episode of his satirical news show, The Colbert Report, uh, in 2005, coined the term truthiness. It means, according to Wikipedia, which itself might be a victim of truthiness, a quality characterizing a truth that a person making an argument or assertion claims to know intuitively from the gut, because it feels right, without regard to evidence, logic, intellectual examination, or facts. He introduced his definition in the first segment of the episode saying, now, I'm sure some of the word police, the word nistas over at Webster's, are gonna say, hey, that's not a word. Well, anybody who knows me knows I'm no fan of dictionaries or reference books. They're elitist, constantly telling us what is or isn't true or what did or didn't happen. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. The person, Stephen Colbert, not his alter ego, said in an interview after this segment, truthiness is tearing apart our country. And I don't mean the argument over who came up with the word. It used to be everybody was entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. But that's not the case anymore. Facts matter not at all. Perception is everything. It's certainty. People love the president because he's certain of his choices as a leader, even if the facts that back him up don't seem to exist. It's the fact that he's certain that is very appealing to a certain section of the country. I really feel a dichotomy in the American populace. What is important? What you want to be true or what is true? Truthiness is what I say is right, and nothing anyone else says could possibly be true. It's not only that I feel it to be true, but that I feel it to be true. There's not only an emotional quality, but there's a selfish quality. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love. Love one another deeply from the heart. Truth continues to be a contested category in our world. We live right now in 2017 in a world where people attend protests with signs that read, science is real. That is not a dystopian young adult novel. This is a thing that is happening right now. And right in the middle of it, right in the middle of our Easter season, these weeks after Easter day, where we, as Christians, like the disciples, are wandering around a little dazed, trying to figure out what it means to live with the reality of new life and resurrection, what it means to live again after loss, sorrow, heartbreak, confusion, we hear this word from Peter. And what we hear is that there's something about being obedient to truth 
that purifies our souls. There's something about being obedient to truth that grants us genuine mutual love and the capacity to love each other deeply from the heart. Marriage counselors tell us that one of the not-so-secret tricks in any marriage is getting people to just tell each other the truth. In boardrooms, year after years of meetings can be had before someone is willing to name the thing that everyone's avoiding. In our own heads, we can convince ourselves that we're doing okay for a long time even when perhaps our body is trying to tell us the truth, that we're not. Truth is powerful. Truth is, in fact, one of the things we say Jesus is. When asked, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't pop up with the Nicene Creed it wasn't about parroting correct beliefs. It was something about the truth of being in a body with experiences here among others, which I find interesting. Truth opens us up. And we saw that a little in our community when we did our listening sessions about children and youth when we got in a room together and simply told each other the truth about our experience of church, suddenly everything got a little more manageable and a little less polarized. We just became human beings again in a room together. And I think this is because you can only love someone you actually know. You can't love an idea of someone, whether that idea exists on a high pedestal or is a mean caricature. You can only love someone, themselves. And that takes obedience to truth. I do want to be clear, too, that while it is critical, we remain unambivalent about the goodness of science and the beauty and worth of science, that truth and peer-reviewed facts are not precisely the same categories. When we talk about the Bible, the scriptures, it's important to remember that the stories can be telling us something true without being a factual retelling of physical events. They're not scientific journals or the New York Times doing investigative reporting. The books, the library that is the Bible are made of poems and stories and hopes and rules and cautions. Sometimes uh, I talk about this, um, this way of something being true is uh, if you've ever been very absorbed in a novel and it just feels like your whole world has tunnel visioned into the world of this novel. You're completely absorbed, you finish it, you slam the book shut, and you set it down on the table and you look at it like it's alive. The novel isn't factual, right? But there's something true. Something true is there. And while we must trust scientists, we must also trust each other. And here's where some of this gets nuanced and sticky because there is truth out there that is not yet being measured by science. The academy and scientific research are human endeavors susceptible to the same things the rest of us are, funding, attention, racial and economic bias. People who experience violence and harm often have information that people protected from that harm don't have. Black people were reporting severe disparities in police treatment long before white people started tracking those disparities in journalism. Women were talking about epidemics of sexual harassment long before men bothered to start collecting that data. And those things were true, but not verified by certain people at certain times. And this is when it does become particularly important to trust people's lived experience to trust the truth that comes from looking at the world from below. 
People were telling things that happened, true things, not truthiness things, not things they felt happened, but they simply didn't have the kind of proof that gatekeepers considered acceptable. Lest we think this thing is a new phenomenon, we have a story this morning where a couple of people on the road to Emmaus explain to disguised, resurrected Jesus that some women had told them a ridiculous story about resurrected Jesus. And they didn't believe them. In just two verses before the reading we get today, the words of the women are described as an idle tale. And the nuances of that Greek phrase are interesting. It's something like women's trinkets. Uh, we thought that story they were telling us was a little girly trinket story. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was dismissed in this way. And then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophet, prophets have declared. Which just goes to show that even dying and rising again did not make our beloved Savior any less snarky. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. Truth and love and freedom are so intricately woven together and so interdependent on one another. We may not always even be able to see where one ends and the other begins. I wonder if there's a place in your own heart or your own work or your own family that could use your honesty right now, that could use a little jolt of truth. Perhaps this week, as we tiptoe our own way into resurrection, we could try to be the person who names an unspoken truth and brings it to light. I'm not promising this will make you popular, in fact, the opposite is generally true. Didn't go very well for Jesus. The truth is allergic to longtime assumptions and biases, especially our most cherished ones. And often, a juicy rumor or gossip or a half truth is much more appealing than the boring old truth. But every act of it makes us all more free. Every act of truth is an act of pure hope. It opens up the possibility of genuine mutual love. It makes us see each other in clear daylight. It purifies our souls, the scripture tells us. And in this way, the resurrection continues, and we continue to rise again. <laughs>